You know, anything that's different to a soldier is almost as good as gold or pussy. Hello everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode. <laughs> Live from the lair! <laughs> All right, what are we going to talk about here? Uh, let's see. All right, we're in the the last, uh, ha the second half of, of our rack deployment. You know, um, I'm operating out of Slayer, and then, uh, you know, I had third platoon jumping around, uh, around Biop doing missions, uh, and then they broke them up into... Uh, you know, a team and one team plus support to different locations. So now I had a platoon by itself in three or four locations at one time, which was a fucking bitch. You know, I had first platoon operating out of Abu and second platoon up north. And, uh, you know, I would get called out to go visit these guys from time to time. Uh, and sometimes I would just do it just for the fucking shits and giggles because I need to get the fuck away from the flagpole. Because being so close to the 202 MI battalion flagpole and the battalion commander and sergeant major was starting to siphon off some of my IQ points. And I, I just couldn't fucking do it. So I had, to, I had to take a break. But a couple times I would get a fucking call. Like, hey, you need to come out to, you know, where we're at. Uh, we're having a hard time, you know, getting resupplied. Um, and, you know, we need X amount of ammo, you know, just to be, you know, to, made, to be made current again. So I'd be like, fuck. So that means I would have to fucking jump on the fucking convoy over to Victory with all of my with my rucksack weapon and all my shit, hauling one or two boxes, you know, crates of fucking ammo. What a fucking cunt bitch that was. Alright? That fucking sucked balls. Cause that shit's fucking heavy. Okay, because it's made of, I don't know, lead. <laughs> I did that all the fucking time. All the time. And I hope those motherfuckers appreciate it because I fucking th halfway threw my back out doing that stuff. Okay. And we got our hands on a lot of extra stuff that we were, was not on our M2 by swapping, you know, AKs and SVD sniper rifles and pistols and all kinds of Russian fucking stuff. It was, it was all over Iraq at the time. And our, our, my guys would fucking pinch it bring it back into the wire and half the time they would turn it in the other half of the time it would they would finger fuck it and play with it like a new toy in the room and then until they got sick of it or they got something better and then they'd swap it out and we traded they, they traded a lot of that stuff and so did we because you know anything that's different to a soldier is almost as good as gold or pussy you know if you can't have those two things then fucking with new stuff that, that, that takes the cake right there. While on victory at this time, I remember I'd go over to the main PX. I was parked in the parking lot. And at that time, I was the first sergeant. And, you know, whenever my vehicle rolled out, I, I would either sit behind the driver, directly behind the driver, or I would be the gunner. Okay, because I don't want, you know, I'm sorry, but when... When, it, when it's my fucking ass on the line, I want to, you know, be the guy behind the trigger. So maybe I have some say whether I live or die. But I remember I, I came out of the fucking uh, PX. And I'm on the vehicle just chilling. Waiting for a couple of other guys to come out of the fucking PX. And this one guy walks up to me. And he looks vaguely familiar. But I really couldn't place it. And he walks up on me, and he's a master sergeant, green beret, long tamer. And uh, I re he, he was in my Q course. I was fucking, I was just, wow. I was taken back, like, holy fuck. You know, and we shake hands, and he tells me the deal. And then he starts going down the line of all of the guys who were wounded, and all the guys who were fucking, you know, KIA, and all the guys who died in training, and or were fucking, you know, killed in motorcycle or DWI deaths or whatever, or retired, or just straight up retired or medically retired. And it turns out that this one master sergeant and I were the last two people 
from my 11 Bravo class to still fucking wear the uniform and do the deal. All the rest had been fucking, you know, crushed and broken. And uh, that was, that was fucking really fucking crazy. Because uh, it had only been, I got done in 92, it had been like eight, no, it had been like 12 years. And uh, those guys, like, the special app guys especially have such a high operation tempo that people burn out, break, die, you know, at such an, an astounding rate. It, it's crazy. And so, I know some guys who were in spec ops, you know, for 18 years and spent, of the 18 years, they spent 13 to 14 years deployed. That is fucking insane. And then there's other guys who had actually, you know, came in the army at 18 and they're still in and they're now 42 years old and that's all they've done is, you know, go to fuck deploy to war, come back for six to eight months, 10 months, re start retraining, deploy again for another fucking year. It, 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 yeah. Those guys have to be fucking crazy. Okay, you, you just have to be. That's that's fucking tough. I, I don't think I could do it. I myself. I mean, I don't know. That that's a long, long fucking time. I already talked about the gunner duty. You know, usually when I'd set up my turret, I would have either a, uh, a sixty or I'd have a Mark nineteen. I didn't. I didn't care. I didn't like the fifty. I, I like usually having the Mark 19. You know, if you have the Mark 19, you are now operating the greatest casualty producing weapon on that convoy. And it pays to have that in the hands of people who know how to use it. So I'd do that. I would, I'd set that up as my primary weapon. And then I would have like a, a, an M249 saw as a, a offset. So if I ran the main one dry, you know, and shit was still going crazy, I just rotate the turret again until the, the secondary weapon is there and I can do what I got to do with that. And uh, that worked out pretty good. And that turret came with the up armors because it had, that one had the chicken plates and all the other bullshit. Uh, because the uh, Humvees that we were sent there with were just the bare bones, fucking vinyl doors, nothing, you know, not a lick of protection. And then we put chicken plates on those and, and pig iron and did the best we could. And it worked first the small arms, but if we if we ever got hit with anything big, you know, you're fucked. It's only quarter inch steel, you know. Most 308s, if they hit a 308 fired with inside of 150 meters, if it hits the quarter inch steel straight at a 90 degree, it's gonna punch through. At angles and stuff, it's, it'll make gouges and, and scrapes and stuff, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna burst through. All right, so we were taking a lot of fucking attacks, basically between the end of April, no, beginning of April, uh, May, June, July, and it started to slow down a little bit, but not much. I mean, you know, it was fucking crazy. It got so bad that uh, there was fucking with people's, you know, mid tour leaves and stuff. Because, you know, everyone was supposed to come back stateside for 10 to 14 days leave and then come back. And you didn't, you know, you would put in for your dates and then they'd be approved. And then all of this crazy shit happened and it just fucked everything up. And I remember on a couple times, you know, I had guys that would go back stateside and get married. Like a bunch of idiots, but that's their business. And one time, one of my soldiers, redhead guy... Went home, got married, and then uh, basically got married, and then he had to literally leave to come back like 16 hours later. So he calls me on the phone, he tells me the fucking deal. You know, when I look at his leave schedule, and I see that he, he got sent out fucking early. You know, he, his day, he was supposed to go out like, you know, six or eight days later, and it got all fucked up. And I'm like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. All right, you're going to get the super secret first sergeant fucking mid-tour leave extension of 72 hours. Okay, I'll cover for you on my end. 
when you come in you just say you got fucked with you know you got bumped from a couple flights there was technical issues in germany you know coming back through kuwait i mean shit happens and uh you know i, I would take the fucking heat he he, he takes us th three extra days you know calls me the the day he leaves to go to the airport to start coming back i'm like okay cool okay so when he was supposed to be back you know he showed up on you know, 24 hours later he showed up on a list for being late and then you know every night they'd fucking ask me questions why the fuck your guy is fucking not here what's going on or should we mark him a wall blah 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 and i'm like no no not a wall i think he's just having a problem in germany or kuwait I've, I've heard that fucking excuse a few times and uh it's valid because it really does happen so i kept it under wraps but when he finally when he did come back in you know i knew that they were going to fucking fuck with him bad because they're, they're our battalion commander was a fucking asshole so you know i would fucking intercede for him because i you know understood the double jeopardy thing so I would negatively counsel him, and then I would make him dig a dummy hole. All right. And then, you know, when the battalion wants to know what I fucking did about it, I just said I smoked the shit out of him, and I fucking negatively counseled him. And, you know, they really can't do anything more about it because he's already been punished. I'm doing my fucking job. But I wasn't really a super asshole about it. Most of the time, these guys would go out there and dig their fucking hole. And I would go with them, and I would help them dig the hole, because I'm just as fucking guilty as they are. And we drink a couple of ice-cold fucking alcohol-free beers and talk some shit and laugh and fucking whatever. It would take, like, you know, somewhere three to five hours to dig the dummy hole. and Yeah, because we took our sweet-ass time, you know. But, you know, I had to do that probably, I would say, half a dozen times. Half a dozen times I had to run interference for guys uh, for shit like that because, you know, craziness happens. Somebody dies or somebody gets sick or, you know, some other stuff, you know. And, and it, I really hated having to deliver Red Cross messages to soldiers that were in my unit because I had three of them. And one of them belonged to a guy and uh, he is one of his best friends that he'd known since he was like five or six years old uh, was dying of cancer when he deployed. And then, you know, he had, he had, a, he fucking basically died while we were there. So I called the guy in, sat him down, told him the deal, and it broke my fucking heart. It just broke my fucking heart to tell somebody that bad news like that. You know, I think we had another grandparent die who was like a father to somebody else, and we sent his ass back on emergency leave. And uh, that's another thing, you know, that's one thing I would say that the Army's good at. If a Red Cross message comes in and you need to get the fuck out of there, they will get you the fuck out of there. All right, that's, they're really good about that. So, that that was fucking tough. I, I, I come across as a hard ass, but I really... I really fucking hate giving bad news. You know, no, nobody does. Okay, I don't care who you are. All right, super secret leave extension plus punishments. We're uh, we're at like 14, 15 minutes. I think we're gonna call it tonight. Call this one a little short because uh, a couple of these are pretty intense and will probably run over more than you know four to six minutes. So I'll talk to you guys later.